Morning all. I played a very interesting game last night in the Middlesex Chess League. I was playing against someone called Chris Todd, who's about 181 ECF at the moment. And he kicked off with E4. It was an 8 board match, but we were playing on board 2. Uh, I played actually the Sicilian defence uh, for a more open tactical game than the French defences of the previous season. And I've been having some good fun with it. Knight f3, d6. Okay, he goes into the open Sicilian. We go into the Nidor variation in particular. So bishop e3 was played here. And now I play, uh, usually it's e5 or e6, but I thought knight g4 was quite a bit of fun. I was expecting bishop g5 and then something like this, h6 and then g5, so I could have a fincho to bishop. I always thought black has some good counterplay in this uh, in this variation. But funny enough this didn't happen. My opponent simply left the bishop on e3. He played bishop z4. So it took me a bit by surprise uh, to play this. I think it's quite rarely played bishop c4 in comparison with just moving the bishop either to g5 or c1. I have 13 games in my book compared to uh, over a thousand with bishop g5 and about 650 with bishop c1. So bishop c4, I just snapped it off. Knight takes e3, f takes. I just played e6. And now, okay, I sense there's some f file pressure, but I thought the e5 square would be extremely juicy for a knight going to e5 later. White castled. And for some reason, I was kind of oblivious uh, to this f file pressure. I didn't really think I had a problem here. Of the bishop e7, though, it did occur to me when my opponent was thinking here. I think. Uh, there's a possibility of rook takes f7. Well, I couldn't quite see how this could be made to uh, do anything. I thought, for example, this bishop's going to be enough for defending on the f file. Apparently, this next move, rook takes f7, which was played, is actually quite good, uh, according to Houdini here, Houdini 4. Uh, usually, in this position, four games have seen. Uh, queen h5. There has been rook takes f7 uh, as well in the past. Only like two games I have in live book. Now one here went like this. Uh, queen g4 and black played rook f8 in one game apparently, and then the other they played d5. In both cases, technically, if we just look at rook f8 here, technically, white's doing extremely well, apparently. Say rook f8. Well, in the game, actually, bishop takes, bishop takes, knight takes, and apparently queen c8. And that's the end of uh, the variation I've got. But here, black seems to be in big, big trouble. Uh, if queen e8, knight takes g7, rook f1 is pretty strong now. And this this looks horrendous. White's got numerous threats, like knight takes d6. Uh, so queen d7, knight d5. I think it's all pretty much over now for black. Uh, this this knight on f5 is is pretty crushing. Knight g7 check, for example, queen has to take losing f8, losing the queen. It's better for white. So that seems a total disaster in this line. Rook takes f7. Uh, for what was played, queen g4. That seems a very strong move, queen g4. What does black actually do here? I mean, 
the other thing tried was d5 but let's have a, I mean this pawn's pinned so there's no e5 so okay it's, it doesn't leave too many possibilities actually uh, dangerous position indeed d5 was the other game ed apparently rook f8 but here uh, just d takes e6 knight f5 and again the rook sacrifice seems pretty strong White's threatening mate now. Uh, what does black do? If rook takes, queen takes. Let's have a look at this. Knight e6, knight d5. White apparently is is technically doing very well here. You can give up that bishop for this check. Taking here. And there's a back row issue. So bishop takes e6, knight takes. In this position, white would stand uh, better. <laughs> wow. So it does. It does appear that queen g4 is a very strong continuation in this position. A rook down, just queen g4 after this rook sack. So either d5 or rook f8 don't seem to be doing that well technically. Amazing. Maybe I was, I was slightly fortunate in in my game. Uh, my opponent didn't play queen g4. My opponent played knight takes e6, which did look quite dangerous as well. But I wasn't quite sure how this attack finishes me off. I I, I just uh, took this, I took, king takes, I didn't see how I was getting mated. And technically black is okay here actually, queen d5, king d7, but I, I did notice I am losing this rook. Whoops. I'm still the bishop up though, for a few pawns. Queen takes b7, uh, here, apparently, the most accurate is actually queen c7. Uh, for example, queen c7, queen takes, queen c6, check. And the, the rook needs to keep protecting the knight, so king e6 looks a bit scary. Rook f1, knight d7. Black should be okay. Although I don't like the look of this knight on d5 particularly. But apparently black is is technically okay. Black is a piece up. If he's not getting mated, it should be okay. Uh, but in the game, okay, this looks to be in inaccuracy for me. I played king e8. Now after queen takes a8, I played knight d7. With, with the view on queen b6 if offering the a6 pawn. Apparently this should just be about equal. After queen b6 here, my opponent, if he wants an equal position, can have queen c8 check or queen a8. Apparently both of these, Houdini thinks at least, that white should be okay. For example, like this. Knight d5, offering b2. Rook f1. Rook f8, and we have this check, seesaw check, which should secure a draw. Now, in the game, I my opponent didn't play queen c8 or queen a8, uh, with the same sort of idea of sacrificing b2. So queen a8, again, sacrifice b2, and it looks as though white should be okay. If queen b8 here, then maybe white can actually take this and then play a4. It could be dangerous. Let's, let's see though, in the game though, after queen b6, this is slightly different, slightly improved version of that. My opponent actually took here. And, okay, I was a bit concerned about the number of pawns for the bishop after knight takes b6. White has uh, seven pawns to my three, so I'm four pawns down for the bishop. 
But I remember in the past a very strong player called Nick Foster who once said about pieces being more important often than pawns. I think that's especially when the pawns don't have mobility. I think we need to qualify that. Do the pawns have mobility? The king seems to be usefully placed in this position on the queen side in any case. Um, and I'm looking forward to things like bishop f6 to sort of try and damage white's pawn structure. In fact, white immediately here sees the opportunity to undouble these two pawns with knight d5. I didn't think I had much choice here uh, other than to take that knight. I can't leave it on d5. If I leave it on d5, I think it's pretty horrible. A4 and actually the engine likes white hair. So I think the best is potentially to take that, even though it's undoubling white pawns. E takes. Now king d7. So I will try and uh, block, immobilize these pawns, make sure they don't see their full potential. I think king f2 was played, bishop f6, rook b1. And now I see a way of not only trying to restrict these pawns but also this one with this idea of rook a8 to actually park the rook after a3 on a4 trying to discourage e4 from white. Now my opponent played the move c3. Uh, was that strictly necessary here? Well Let's see what happens. King c7. I want to get my king up the board. The king is a powerful piece in the end game. If I can hit the d5 pawn, how is that going to be protected? I have a slight issue with my score sheet uh, in this game. It seems it was impossible to reconstruct from the moves I had. I believe actually the game went like this King e2, King b6. Now rook d1 in anticipation of king c5. Rook d2, but now my king has the potential to use this weakened b3 square. My reasoning is, if I can get my king here, it's attacking the base of the pawn chain. If the base of the pawn chain falls, then these two are going to be weaker. So king c4, knowing that the bishop's eyeing d4 here, e4, my opponent takes the opportunity to play e4 because the rook is not attacking e4 at the moment. King b3 attacking e4 now. King d3, and it looks as though white's achieved something here. And I thought, am I in trouble here? How do I actually continue any sort of attack? Then I noticed something. This pawn chain is vulnerable because of bishop g5. If I can get my bishop to c1, then I'm on these pawns. My opponent plays rook f2. And here there is a concern though, that if I go after this b2 pawn, rook f7 is good. Let's have a quick look. I didn't play this, but bishop c1, rook f7, I think technically Houdini likes actually white. Uh, so even say I take this pawn, my, I start losing these other pawns basically, and it gets to be a real pain. I think taking these pawns uh, is a bit slow. White's going to create another pass pawn over here. It always has e5 as well in the future to factor in. Technically, White's doing okay here, according to the engine anyway. So I didn't want this rook infiltration here, I actually played rook a7, suspending the idea of bishop c1. Technically though, white can create a pass pawn in this position. He didn't play this, but e5 apparently is equal. d takes, king e4, white has created the pass pawn in the center. And what is black actually doing here? So rook d7, king takes e5. What is black actually doing? I'll be struggling to draw this, in fact. Now if the rook moves here, 
and bishop c5 with blockade. Uh, so the engine is actually indicating king e6, rook takes, king takes, bishop takes. And this actually, for some reason, is fizzling out into a draw, this scenario. I think the bishop's tied down. Maybe white's going to get rid of the pawns. This, this, this is apparently equal. Just take and we get drawn king and pawn in there. But uh, let's go back. Thankfully for me, e5 wasn't played. That looks to be white's saving chance here to play e5. In the game, uh, rook c2 was played. And now I just play rook f7. My rook is able to come down here and threaten rook d1 check because the king's actually hitting the rook here. So the king moves, king takes c2. This is a major threat. And here, um, it's difficult for white, but white doesn't really play uh, one of the better moves, which apparently is like c4 or e5 still. If e5 here again, trying to create a pass pawn, for example, this isn't so easy for black. What is going on here? e4, there's two pass pawns. If takes king c4 and white is actually starting to get some prospects. So I think white had to play dynamically for the pass pawns here, the other pass pawns. So e5 again looks to be a strong move in the circumstance. In fact, what is actually black doing here after rook e2? Apparently rook d7, bishop f4, is the most I'm aiming for is some sort of blockade again. Uh, it just looks pretty, pretty scary actually. With the king over here, this king looks quite aggressively placed. Apparently black is, is slightly better, technically low here. Alright, so in the game my task was made a lot easier with instead h3 being played and now black just plays, I just play rook f1 with the threat of rook d1 check winning the rook. King e2 was played and Stronger than just taking the rook. Uh, I just played here rook b1. And white is losing the rook. The rook is actually trapped here. It's going to have to lose it. If, if I had just taken the rook after king e2, I think this is still okay for black. Uh, taking out that b2 pawn. Uh, is quite ideal for getting other pawns and actually the bishop can handle itself here in this particular position even with e5 although it does look kind of scary here with these two pawns in this scenario apparently king d2 in this pawn is actually quite important so d7 e4 it's only two squares away from a check and then queening d8 takes a7 e3 saves black but anyway I don't need to go into any of this I just played instead of taking the rook just rook b1 and my opponent resigned at the time of the game I, I didn't think it was it was that hard getting the king here I didn't do much but apparently yeah I missed out quite a lot of the dynamic possibilities behind the scenes anyway an enjoyable game very interesting twists and turns behind the scenes especially comments or questions on YouTube thanks very much